and said, you know something? I never knew that somebody could have as many perverted thoughts as you and not be locked up in prison. In his second book, Howard Stern lets it all hang out, even his cleavage. This cover of the book is probably the most evil thing I've ever seen. I think I don't look like a woman. I look like a serial killer here. Stern's celebrity targets include JFK Jr., Woody Allen, and Kathy Lee Gifford. But Howard's listeners know she's been the subject of his wrath for some time. People say to me, do you hate Kathy Lee? I don't hate Kathy Lee Gifford. It's just that Kathy is everything that is wrong with show business. I say in 20 years, Cody Gifford is going to be on the set of Geraldo talking about why I hate my mother. But some women in show business do get Howard's special seal of approval. Pamela Anderson I would love to have sex with, but I give a very low probability of me getting sex with Pamela Anderson. Uh, the Barbie twins, they are, they, are, they are like Barbie dolls. I would like to have them. Howard may dream of big-haired blondes, but his reality is computer sex, which the book details through transcripts. And then my wife started reading it, and she was like, oh, my God, this is horrible. She goes, I, I think it's really funny if it wasn't, you know, if I wasn't your wife, <laughs> you know. Speaking of family, Howard not only hopes to keep the book from his parents, he swears his kids won't read it until they hit their 30s. I'd have to sit down with my kids and explain to them that uh, when I wrote this, I was insane. By the way, Kathy Lee Gifford gets to say her piece about her life in the new issue of Red Book on newsstands tomorrow, and she reveals that she and hubby Frank Gifford may adopt another child. And Howard, she doesn't mention your name once. Uh -uh. But and believe me, as you will never see him again, here's Sharon Reed. Life at the top is very good. To millions of radio fans, this guy's the definition of cool. Shock jock and best-selling author Howard Stern. But once upon a time, Howard could have worked for W-N-E-R-D, nerd. Get a load of that chubby face. Check out that blow-dried hair helmet. Howard, say something so we know it's really you. I get on the air, I'm a filth bag, I know it. Yup, it's Howard, all right. Eleven years and many bad haircuts ago, but irreverent as always. What ethnic group are you with? Now, American Journal has caught up with someone from even deeper in Howard's dark dweeb past. Lich, a fellow DJ who worked with Howard at this radio station in Hartford, Connecticut. What was Howard like back in 1979? Not very organized, you know, always grabbing for albums and for carts at the last minute and throwing them in at the last minute. Hello? When Stern split, Lich says it was because they wouldn't give Howard a $25 a week raise. They said, here's the door. <laughs> and they let him go. The rest was history and a surprise to everyone back at Hartford. Nobody ever suspected that he was going to go on to be the monster that he is. But even in his bad hair days, Howard always saw the bright side of his job. The beats working in a plumbing supply house, which I did. I mean, I think, you know, at least I get to sit on my butt. Well, one of Howard Stern's early stunts was his campaign to have his own birthday recognized as a national holiday. He was partially successful. January 12th is still officially commemorated in Connecticut as Howard Stern Day.